All right, in this lecture, we're going to show you guys how to reverse engineer a database using Entity Framework and all the fun that is involved in that. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm sure you guys have done this a few times, but I'm going to start with the uh, sample database repo that's up here in GitHub. I'm going to clone that. I'm going to go to my source folder on my C drive. Git clone that thing. Get out of there. I'm going to go into the sample DB. I'm going to click on the solution file, <laughs> not the folder. Crack that open. And once that's open, I want to publish my database so that I have a database with some awesome data in it to play with. Okay, we got the sample DB publish XML. I'm gonna double click on that. It's gonna pop up this modal. I'm just gonna click the publish button. We'll wait for the, the green light to show up over here. And this is not a SQLite database, this is a, a real database. Uh oh, got an error. Error occurred while the batch is being executed. Let's see what the error says. View results. So if you ever get an error, you can look at this thing down here. Usually it's at the end. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what the problem might be, though. You already have it, yeah. I might have it. We got that error before. <laughs> okay, let's see. I do have a database. Let me do... Actually, let me do this. I can fix this right here. I'm going to click on this. Actually, we'll do this. There's an advanced setting to blow away the existing and just copy over it with something new. So we'll go to advanced. And it's somewhere over here. Let's see, it's somewhere in here. Da, da, da. Here it is. Always recreate this guy right here. I'm going to check that, click OK. And now, let's see if it will bend to my wheel. I usually close uh, SQL Server Management Studio um, when I'm publishing stuff. I don't know if it's necessary, but I don't know. Once in a while, I get some weird stuff when it's trying to publish and Visual Studio is open too. All right, so it looks like it was good that time around. Um, let me just real quick. It's kind of annoying. I didn't realize it was doing that. Uh, I'm sure there's a change somewhere. I'll try to get it up to GitHub for you. Um, so I'm going to open up Visual Studio or SQL Manager Studio. Connect to my local database and it should be there. Sample DB. So we've been seeing this database a few times already. Um, so this is what I want to do now. I'm going to 
go ahead and shut down that solution. I'm going to start up another one. I'm going to create a new console app. .NET Core, console app, 36. And I need to bring in a couple of different um, dependencies for this thing. So I'm going to open up Package Manager console. I'm just going to go ahead and pin it because I'm going to have this open for a little bit. One thing to note, um, right now we've only got one project over here. There could be like 5, 10, 15, 20 projects over here. We've been seeing very simple solutions so far. Be sure that your default project is always set up to the one that you want it to be. If you hit this drop down, there could be like 10 or 15 showing up. And that's really annoying to install something to a project you didn't intend to. So I'm going to install the any framework core package. Okay, I'm going to install the uh, any framework core tools. And now I'm going to install the uh, SQL Server design thing. And all this stuff that we are doing, this is the alternative to going to NuGet Package Manager and installing it up here. Right? I just find that doing it directly in Package Manager Console is a little quicker. And now I've got this crazy string that I'm going to install. Basically, it's this is what's going to scaffold out our um, our context and our models and all that stuff. It's pointed at my local SQL Server instance, and it's looking at that sample DB that I just created. Go ahead and run this. All right, so there's our context. We've got all these models showing up over here. All these models will have a corresponding table in the database. So we got album, artist, customer, employee, right? If I go over to the database, we'll see an associated table for all those things. So that's pretty cool, huh? Um, let's play around with this stuff a little bit. Console.readline, keep my window open, and let's set up a new context. Is it sample db context? All right, and then let's do var um, customers equals context dot customer dot uh, let's see don't have what I'm looking for because I don't have the using statement for link I'm going to also set up the using statement for um, any framework I'm not sure if I'm going to need it but might as well just bring it in now so customer all uh, we just do customer order by I guess last name might make sense. And you for each customer and customers. I'm just gonna do a console right line. I'll just do um, customer first name and last name, maybe. Customer, dot, we'll do last name first. Let's see if that actually works. F5 to run it. Okay, so there's all the customers in there. 
So other than that little hiccup in the beginning with the uh, database needed to be dropped before I added or published it again, that wasn't too bad, right? Um, there's just a few different um, packages that we need to install. I'll bring that over here for you guys. I installed these three packages on the package manager console, and then I used this line of code to actually scaffold out my projects. All right, and then now that I've got all the models and stuff set up, I can get any data I want. I can add data to the database. Maybe I'll do that again for you guys. Uh, let's do, instead of customers, let's do genre, because that's a very simple one. Our genres equals genre. Um, I'm going to add a new genre. I don't think I need to add the genre ID. I think it's going to add it automatically, but we'll see what happens. Say name equals country. And I don't need to do anything to track. So I sh think I should be able to just add the name. And we'll do context.save changes. I don't actually want to do that there. I want to do it here. I do for each. Let's do, just log out all the genres. Oops. So that should add country to it, and then we should see country pop up down here. So there it is right there. Okay. Um, so it looked like I didn't have to actually do the um, genre ID. Looks like it added it for me automatically. It's got identity set up, so that's cool. So there's an example of getting some data, adding some data, and reverse engineering a, a whole database.